I'm happy to introduce our scholarly communications librarian, Kaulile Khadebe. Kaulile has studied at DUT, UNISA, did her honours at UKZN, and she's currently doing her master's at UCT. She's also worked at various institutions, such as UJ, the City of Johannesburg, UKZN, National Library South Africa, National Health Laboratory Service as a cataloging librarian, and most recently, she was employed by Rhodes University as repository and metadata librarian. She's very passionate about open access, metadata creation and data curation to facilitate easy access of information resources and the pre preservation thereof. She's from KZN, engaged to be married and has a 13-year-old son. She enjoys reading, trying out new places, socialising and watching movies and series. Kaulile and I spoke about the role and challenges of scholarly communications librarians, open access in general, and institutional support for researchers publishing in open access. My name is Kaulile Khadebe. I'm the new scholarly communications librarian at UFS, and I started um, working for uh, UFS libraries in um, February 2020. In my view, I think scholarly communication is the system through which research and other scholarly writings are created, evaluated for quality, disseminated to scholarly community, and preserved for future use. Why does it matter? My role as um, the, the, the scholarly communications librarian, um, I believe it's to contribute to the overall postgraduate postgraduate research experience in the library by facilitating a working relationship and the emerging demand of the digital env environment requires the library to ensure the accessibility and visibility of the institutional research output via our GOSI Scholar and also uh, the GOSI Journals. And to coordinate open access activities and to raise awareness of scholarly communications. Are there any issues in scholarly communications at the moment? Anything that you'd like to, to talk about? Um, the issues that I can think of at the moment uh, in terms of open access and um, copyright and funding as well, which I think are the big issues that we're currently facing with open access. So in terms of open access, I think it still remains controversial. And that is because I believe it threatens the commercial general publishers that profit from the expensive paywalls and, subscri and subscriptions. Uh, and there are still apprehensions that some open access journals may compromise the peer review uh, process. Another point of concern in open access publishing is the visibility of the journal. Um, I think even if the articles are free to access, it is important to ensure that the journals are included in the searchable databases. Unless the articles are, are reflected in the search tools, then accessibility does not add value. I think open access um, publications also face the challenge to establish its credibility. I think as well we should um, consider uh, that um, in our country, we're still facing a lot of inequalities. And in, in some rural areas, um, they are still without technological resources to enable access to information, such as computers, internet, and Wi-Fi connections. So, and the impact of um, not having electricity at all in some areas and with mm. the low shade in our country. So I think as well, we should not only think of open access in terms of online access. We also we should also 
filter in our minds that these challenges still exist somewhere. I was wondering about about that, the idea around open access of it being available to everyone, you know, your society, mm-hmm. bigger society yeah. as well. If if we mm-hmm. if we put that aside for a moment and think just about our students. So if if we do have a student mm-hmm. that, that is struggling with internet access, how mm-hmm. how can we then apply the principle? We can, yeah. as long as as long as we are not in, in, infringing any copyrights, um, I think we should make it available in print as well, just to make sure that everyone gets equal access to information. The theme this year for 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 open access is called everywhere. So I believe it it is our duty to ensure that information is accessed everywhere in an appropriate mode for that location or for that community. We should be inclusive to everyone. We should always try to find ways to make sure that um, it's inclusive. So you work with the electronic thesis and dissertations. Mm -hmm. Um, Can you maybe just um, explain why it is important for students to send an electronic copy of their thesis and dissertation to the library? I believe it's very important. I do work with the electronic thesis and dissertation. I think it's important for students to make sure that their thesis are available um, through um, Golsi Scholar. I believe that because it increases the readership. If it's out there, it's online, and everyone can access it. It increases the readership and um, dissemination of their research. And um, it also assists in increasing visibility and prestige of both the institution and the author. And um, as well, it facilitates the, the preservation and research for um, to the research to um, for future use. I mean, mm-hmm. how many times do I mean? I think you told some stories as well from your previous institution of students coming mm-hmm. to you with with a request for the, a copy of the thesis or dissertation mm-hmm. <laughs> that that they've yeah. lost. They don't to copy themselves, but they know if they come to the library. Definitely, they will find a copy. <laughs> but it is difficult to, to get all the, the copies. It, 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 it's one of, of the challenges that we're facing, uh, that we don't always get everything that is published by the institution each year, especially because we don't have a streamlined procedure to receive final copies of ETDs. So the onus is on the, on the student at the moment. But hopefully, um, I've, start, I've just started uh, now in my position. I hear that the, the, the postgraduate school is working on, on, on the um, graduate research management system, which will assist us uh, in ensuring that all uh, ETDs are received by the library. We can urge students to make sure that their ETDs are submitted to the library um, and they can even self-submit um, on the platform and their thesis will be made available through Kofi Scholar. And another challenge that we face is that um, we sometimes receive ETDs which are not final copies, which still reflect track, track changes. Um, and sometimes we receive um, empty CDs, those students who still uh, submit CDs. So we ask students to take responsibility um, to make sure that they submit to the library the final copy and they send CDs that are readable and are not empty. Just kind of a more more general question. What's your mm-hmm. general feeling about the future of open access in scholarly communications? Um I believe that the tide is turning, Cornell. Um, it may be slow progress, but um, the citation advantage and positive citation impact for researchers, um, especially uh, by the green and hybrid open access, 
and increasingly now with the bronze open access. I think we're making positive um, change. It's slowly coming. Of open access, uh, I think um, academic institutions, fundamental role um, is removing barriers to the free exchange of information and transformation. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry, the transforming of landscape of scholarly communication through building institutional repositories, publishing open access journals, and hosting open educational resources, and facilitating um, access to research data. Yeah, many of these uh, activities fall under the emergency of, of library publishing, which is a fundamental role for many academic libraries, I think, for the open access future. Whatever form it takes, whether it's the res educational resources or the journals, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it can't it can't grow and flourish without that institutional support. It definitely it's crucial. Um, one thing I think that I, I, I didn't mention in terms of um, the, the the challenges. Um, in terms of copyright and, and funding. I think um, we are all aware of the problems presented by the monopolistic control of copyright by publishers. Libraries are very conscious of the aggressive way in which publishers are seeking not only to retain their rights, but also to strengthen their, uh, their rights through uh, copyright licensing. So I think that yeah. is the challenges that we're facing in terms of open access. And, and, and for the funding, um, I think um, open access model puts additional financial burden to the researcher. To come to think about it that almost all institutions earmark funds for subscriptions of journals. And that is done annually by the institutions. But on the other hand, policies towards the image of article processing charges have not yet evolved. Even yes. though we, we believe that um, public funded research should be freely available to everyone, especially the taxpayers, should also earmark. Um, funding for um, open access as well. But most of the time, I think that the honors to generate um, funds lies primarily with the investigators, which puts additional constraints uh, to the researcher. And it's kind of, it, it's almost frustrating if you think about um, funding yeah. mandates that, like the NRF, that say, okay, you you are supposed to publish in open access, but then your institution <laughs> doesn't necessarily wholly support the funding mm. for. And another thing, um, I think uh, the institutions um, not supporting, um, I, I, no, putting um, these. Um, promotions that are linked with publishing and uh, uh, put pressure on researchers to to publish in, in, in high um, prestigious journals, which yeah. are usually not open access. So I think that is one of the challenges as well. Again, if the the institution must also change the incentives then uh, for the for the researcher um, yeah. if you publish in in open access, because most of the time these uh, high impact um, uh, journals they are not open access. If a researcher is put under pressure to to publish in high impact journals and uh, in prestigious journals then um, open access suffers. I think researchers should just publish because it's their obligation to do so and for social justice, not, not because of 
the the ratings and promotions. Yeah, they should just publish to improve the situation of the disadvantage, especially in the de- developing world. There definitely are researchers, I think, that that have that mm. approach. Um, mm-hmm. But but yeah, like you say, the pressures of performance. Um, mm. can sometimes just be too high, especially the younger researchers. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. Want promotions who still want to to be seen, to be recognized. They they have that pressure. Yeah. So again, if the institution changes its its um reward mm. for publishing in, in open access and more local contextual mm. journals, then it would be easier. To yeah. promote the whole open environment. Yes, so in a natural institutional support, very important. I think so too. And and it's really coming out now that we're talking to everyone. Um, mm. there's, there's a slight change, a slight change in attitude to open access over the last few years at our institution. And in the beginning, when I started working with it, it was as if you know, people knew about it um, and uh, a lot of researchers already published in open access, but um, it wasn't at the forefront of their minds. And then all of a sudden, everybody got panicky, you know, about predatory journals and you know, what does it mean and all of that. And now it, it's slowly, like you say, it is slowly developing and it is slowly going towards a point where People are asking the right questions, I think. Yes. And there's a library we are there to support um, researchers' needs. Questions if they have any doubts, if they have any doubts in terms of um, which journals to publish to, then they can come to the library or contact any of us to find out if the journal is credible, the journal is... Uh, recognized by the higher department of education and all of that. How can mm-hmm. the university community reach you if they need help with their electronic thesis and dissertations? Okay, I'm, I'm based um, at the main Sasol Library in level six at the Scholarly Communications Office number 615B. And they can also um, call me on 051-401-3560. And they, al- they can also email me at khatebeke at ufs.ac.za.